Hi, it's Colin Sanders here from the History Books Review. I'm not reviewing a history book at the moment, I'm reviewing a bit of history which is unfolding before um, our very eyes. I'm recording this five days before the Scots vote on independence, and as things stand, it is absolutely impossible to predict whether the vote will go one way or the other. This has been a story that's been running quite a while in the UK, and no one's taken a huge amount of interest in it south of the border simply because it didn't seem at all likely that the Scots would vote for independence. There's never been any particular poll that's suggested that uh, anywhere near a majority of Scots uh, favour it. The union between Scotland and England has been a great success more or less from day one and it's uh, was something we really just took for granted and didn't really think about. But the way the polls are going it looks like distinct possibility that the United Kingdom may soon cease to be united. At a personal level I find this rather upsetting actually. I was surprised to find this emotion uh, welling up in me. I tend to think of myself as quite a detached person but um, I think of myself as British. If I'm ever asked my nationality, British is what I say. When asked what country I live in I write United Kingdom. And when I say United Kingdom, I'm thinking of the whole island of England and the small little bit of Ireland that's still part of the United Kingdom. Um, and it just seems a bit sad to lose that identity through no particular event that's um, really, really um, impinged on my life personally. And um, uh, th this is sort of... Uh, Making me um, a lot, a lot, a lot more, uh, a lot more disturbed than I, than I would have thought I would would have been if I'd um, had the situation described to me rather than actually experiencing it. But um, looking at it from a wider historical perspective, of course, there's nothing particularly inevitable about the United Kingdom. Um, the Kingdom of Scotland and the Kingdom of Ireland chose to unite in 1710. It was. Uh, um, a fairly evenly um, negotiated deal. It wasn't a question of England taking over Scotland particularly um, and uh, it could easily not have worked out that way at all. In fact about 50 years before the union between Scotland and uh, England, England was, was not a kingdom, it was a republic and there was serious talk about a union between the Protestant Republic of England and the uh, Protestant Republic of Holland, in which case we might be looking here today at a, a vote for England to get out of the United um, Kingdom of uh, England and the Netherlands, which would be um, uh, interesting. It would be also fascinating to think what an entity like that would have, what a difference would have made to European history. Um, equally, there's there was no a compelling reason why it should turn out that Ireland should break away from the United Kingdom. The um, second king after the restoration of the monarchy was uh, James II and he was a Catholic and he um, was clearly edging to reimpose Catholicism in England which uh, with a you know, slightly different set of circumstances you might very well have succeeded in doing in which case you might very well have had um, England and Ireland remaining united, and Scotland as a Protestant country being uh, breaking away from, breaking away from the um, what would then be the United Kingdom of uh, England and Ireland, just as likely in many ways historically. Um, there was another opportunity to link with Holland again when um, William the Third, who was the stadtholder of the Dutch Republic, became the consort of the Queen of England. Um, the constitution was constitutional settlement was set up to exclude William from the monarchy in, in such a way as to prevent him being too powerful, and uh, that meant that England and Holland went their own separate ways again soon afterwards. But the looking at the map, it could easily have been very very differently. So um, the fact that we've got what we've got is largely an historical accident. It's not uh, in any way inevitable, and. Um, I think if I were Scottish I would be quite excited by the proposi proposition of setting up an independent country. I mean Scotland is not a huge country for, but a population of 5 million is a large enough um, 
entity to be an independent country. Um, there's been a lot of uh, talk in the press, uh, tittle tattle about um, companies moving away from Edinburgh to London and uh, the prices in supermarkets being more expensive and this kind of thing. I think this is all um, meaningless and uh, nobody should take any notice of that if, when making their decision as to whether they should vote one way or the other. Um, uh, Scotland seems to me to be um, a perfectly viable state. Um, I, I would much prefer it as part of the United Kingdom and I really hope the Scots don't don't break away but I, f I find the idea um, attractive in many ways. Um, there'll be winners and losers obviously and uh, it's hard to say who will be winners and who will be losers and probably nobody can predict it and it'll probably surprise us all um, but it would be I think quite an exciting thing to have another country with another um, idea in the European Union. It would also have some sort of very very uh, profound effects on, on English politics. Uh, a lot of people talk about the fact that it would um, make it harder for the Labour Party to form a majority government. Um, maybe so. Uh, as a supporter of the Labour Party that's one of the things that um, worries me about Scottish independence but on the other hand um, you know the Labour Party isn't uh, isn't a uh, rigid thing that has to stay the same in in in, um, in an, a, a country which no longer contains Scotland. I'm sure they can work out uh, ways of getting around that problem. I don't think it will ultimately mean that we'll be doomed to two Conservative governments forever. Um, it will also make a big difference in uh, the European Union. Um, at the moment, uh, the UK is um, something of a thorn in the side to the federalists in Europe and uh, unfortunately being a very large country um, they can't they can't ignore it uh, it's also I think even relative to its size it's more influential than it um, it would otherwise be because it's got um, history and connections going back which makes it um, a more significant player than a similar sized economy without the same history would have. So Britain's, um, you know, I'm embarrassed by what uh, an awkward bunch we are in Europe, but um, that, that's the situation. Take off Scotland, suddenly you, you've you no longer automatically got uh, the United Kingdom's sort of historical background to give it the prestige. It will lose a lot of its um, sort of soft power on the European scale. And um, it'll make being anti-European when your neighbours to the north are, I assume, a lot more pro-European. It makes make your anti-Europeanism look a lot less reasonable. So it just weakens the argument in the sort of emotional way as well. And of course, it means that uh, the United Kingdom won't be as big as it used to be. So the anti its anti-Europeanism will be less significant in pure sort of weight of numbers terms. So I would imagine that although many European countries might not like the precedent of um, a small chunk of a country breaking away because they, a lot of them have their own uh, similar breakaway candidates, I think in they'd also sort of reckon, um, think, well, at least on the other hand, it means uh, we've cut the, down the, uh, the awkward squad to size a little bit, um, which will be... An interesting development. It also might very well mean that we will have the um, the euro um, being used um, north of the border, which will be um, another another sort of um, thing which will push Britain towards the euro. Which I think, but personally, I think it's a good thing. But it's certainly a significant thing, whatever whatever way you look at it. Uh, a Britain without the pound is a very different Britain to a Britain uh, with the pound. So all in all, interesting times. Um, and uh, I'll be watching the vote with with interest. And um, if anybody, any Scots people are watching this before they have the chance, please, please, please stay. We don't want, we don't want to lose you. But on the other hand, it'll be a fascinating uh, situation after the vote's been cast, whatever, whatever way it turns out. Thanks for listening.